In this video, we're going to write a function in C to check if one string is a rotation of another string. So for example, if we have a string like this with the characters L, M, N, O, P, this string here would be a rotation of it. Here we'll have N, O, P, L, M. So this string here is a rotation of this string. It is shifted over two characters to the left. So if we took this string and shifted it over two characters to the left, L and M would wrap around and be on the right-hand side, like this. How can we check if one string is a rotation of another string, though? There's one simple algorithm we could use. So let's imagine that we have two strings just like these. We have SA, and SA is going to be L, M, N, O, P. And we have SB, and SB is going to be N, O, P, L, M. What we can do is create a check string. And the check string will be the first string repeated twice, like this. We can then check if the second string here is a rotation of the first by searching for it in the check string. And if it is a rotation, we will find it. Here we do right here. So let's implement this algorithm now with a C function. We'll include a few libraries to help us. We'll include the string.h library, because this library has several helpful functions for working with strings. We'll also include stdlib.h, so we can use malloc to dynamically allocate space for the check string. And we'll include stdbool.h, so we can use a bool return value and return true or false from the function. And the function itself will look like this. We'll say bool is rotation car star s1 and car star s2. So the function is called is rotation, and it's going to return true if s1 is rotation of s2 and false otherwise. So we'll provide a definition of the function down here. And the first thing we'll do is actually check the length of both strings. Because if the strings don't have the same length, then there's no way they can be a rotation. So here we'll say int s1 length is equal to strlen s1. And then we'll say int s2 length is equal to strlen s2. So the strlen function comes from the string.h library, and it returns the length of the string, not including the special null terminator that terminates the string. And we'll check to see if s1 length doesn't equal s2 length. Because if that's the case, we can very easily return false without having to do more work. So we'll say here, if s1 length doesn't equal s2 length, there is no way that one of these strings is a rotation of the other, so we're going to return false. Now, if s1's length does equal s2's length, then we're going to create the check string. To allocate space for the check string, we first have to figure out how large it's going to be. And its size is going to be twice S1's length plus one to account for the null terminator. So we're going to store S1 twice into the check string, concatenating it onto itself. And then we're adding one to account for the null terminator. So now we can actually allocate space for the check string. We'll say car star check string is equal to malloc the size of a character times check size. So malloc is going to allocate space for check size number of characters. And it's going to return a pointer to that space on the heap that check string is going to store. What we'll do now is copy S1 into check string using the str copy function that comes with string.h. So we'll say str copy and we'll copy into check string S1. Then we're going to concatenate on S1 onto itself inside the check string. So we'll say str cat check string S1. So what these two functions here will do is first take S1, which we'll say is going to be this string. And this first operation here, this first function, will copy S1 into check string. Then string concatenation here is going to take S1 
and concatenate it onto check string. So we'll end up with this, S1 after S1. Now to check if S2 is in this string, we're gonna use another string.h function. We're gonna use the str str function. So we'll say str str check string S2. So this function is gonna check for S2 in the check string. Basically doing what we described up here, checking to see if the second string is in the check string. Now it's gonna return null if it's not. And it's gonna return a pointer to the position of this string in the check string if it is in there. So we're gonna be able to check if the return value from this function is null to determine whether the strings are rotation or not. So here I'll say car star check result. And we're gonna hang on to this. Then we're gonna free the check string. So we free the check string because we're done working with it and we don't wanna have a memory leak, but also because this is really our last chance. The next thing the function is gonna do is return. So here we'll say if check result is equal to null, return false. Otherwise, return true. So if S2 could not be found in check string, that means that S2 is not a rotation of S1. In that case, str str is gonna return null. So if check result is null, return false. Otherwise, if S2 could be found in check string, that means that S2 is a rotation of S1. And in that case, str str is gonna return a pointer to the location in check string where S2 begins. And in that case, we're gonna to wanna to return true. So let's actually test this function out now. Up here, we'll say if is rotation S A S B, then printf that percent %s is a rotation of percent %s backslash n, and we'll output S A and S B. Otherwise, printf percent %s is not a rotation of percent %s backslash n, S A and S B. All right, so we'll save this and give it a test. In this case, we expect to see that it is a rotation, and it is. LMNOP is a rotation of NOPLM. Let's try something that's not a rotation. We'll switch the M and L characters here and save this. And now we get that LMNOP is not a rotation of NOPML. And that makes sense, because it's not. So this is how we can detect if one string is a rotation of another using C. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.